I didn't know is that they wanted me to confess. Nikasikia mulio wa risasi. Nikauliza ni wapi huko kunaibiwa. Hapo ndiyo nilijua wanjuguna amekufa. He was just an innocent good citizen whom they tortured to death. Baada ya siku ka chache tu akawa ni mtu hapatikani sana. The wheel of justice in Kenya doesn't move. Fifteen years ago, a civic leader is murdered in the most brutal manner. Councillor Charles Maina Wanjiguna was shot at close range before his murderers drove a six-inch nail through his skull. Who wanted the councillor dead and why? Case files, the Ruiru 12, starts now. Mihako Estate stands on the same spot it did 15 years ago, but much has changed since. The once quiet and deserted land full of trees and bushes has given way to residential houses and a fast-growing human population. What Mihako has now done is outlive the mud of a civic leader, described as shrewd, yet gentle, an ambitious politician. Charles Maena Wanjugona was a councillor in Ruiru Municipality, one of the once powerful county councils where vicious politics thrived alongside high-level corruption. Wanjugona, father of two, was a well-known man in Ruiru. He was a man who 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 was a ama ideas ama mshirikiana na yeye kusaidiana ni mtu alikuwa mtu mzuri sana kwa hivyo ni mtu tulikuwa tumependa sana na mtu alikuwa rafiki wetu wa karibu but his fame and ambition will turn tragic two years later in the second week of june 1999 when juguna as he was fondly referred to was driving home with his daughter when he was accosted by a known number of people the gang appears to have known the councillor's night movements well. They overpowered the civic leader, frog marched him into the house, demanding for money. They then dragged him out of the house, but they were not done just yet. Before leaving, the gang shot him at close range, cut him up and drove a six-inch nail through his skull. Charles Maina Wanjuguna died on the spot. As the gang left, they nearly ran into a police motor vehicle, responding to the sound of gunfire. The gang abandoned the getaway vehicle and ran away, disappearing into the dead of the night. Police officers in Ruiru had a homicide in their hands and killers on the run. At the time, there was word that Wanjuguna had been killed because he stood a better chance of winning the mayoral contest. Ruiru Municipal Council was going into an election. Charles Maina Wanjuguna and Stanley Njoroge Munene were the front runners. The council's civic leaders were engaged in a competitive silent campaign for the town's mayor opposition. Loyalties won the parties that sponsored the candidates for the position of councillors. The civic leaders were identified with particular candidates. Daniel Kairu told Case Files on the fateful night when Wanjuguna was gunned down, he was about to climb to bed. Siku moja nikiwa nyubani kwangu, nikasikia murio wa lisasi. Nikauliza ni, ni wapi huko kunaibiwa saa hizi. Na baada ya dakika chache tu nikasikia mtu amekibia. Nikashidwa ni kitu gani kinaendelea. Na kwa kuwa hakukuwa na mayoe, hakukuwa na chochote. Wakati hui walienda na lizazi, tukasikia hakuna lizazi gini na pigwa. Sasa watu walipumuzika tuna wakari. Mimi nikapumuzika, nikahara. Na hata asubu yake nikamukia kwenda shukulangu. It wasn't one gunshot but several, and the killers were more than one. The events of the previous night became clear the following day. Kati moja, nilikuwa nimeweka workshop pale Gedhurai. Na nilikuwa nasumbuliwa sana na askari ya silikansu. Yani wana harasi mimi mpaka naona hii kazi ya fadhali ni funge. Na wakati niliona, nilikutana na wanjuguna, na nikamuambia abari ya hiyo, 
akanambia siku ya Friday atakuja tuende na Eruiru tuongee na huyo mkubwa wa maskari wa Setikanzo wa Waruiru lakini kitambo ifike siku ya Friday Sanjugu na kauawa siku ya Thursday usiku nilishangaa sana mtu amekuja asubuhi kunisalamia na kuniuza umwe hoko iko namna gani kamwambia ni kuzuri naambia unaniambia ni kuzuri na nasikia kwamba mna mmelala kama mna uwa wanjuguna na wanjuguna ndio sasa mimi nangoja hapa na ndio sasa information inakuja kwamba ameuawa ame usiku si kuamini eh, masikio yangu nilienda kwake na hata kabla sija ingia kwa nyumba pale kwa gate nikakuta watu wengi nikaamini kweli kumbe hatuendi roiro sababu alikuwa tukiana tuena na yeye amekufa nilisikia watu wakisema igawaje mimi siku hata mwili siku uona na hata lakini nilisikia watu wakisema alipigwa mshumaji hata kichwa walikuwa nasema ikana hata karibu ilikuwa imekatwa karibu iende sasa hata mimi maoni yangu ama mafikiria yangu nilifikiria labda walipiga mshumali ndio wapate mahali ya kushika wapeleke mahali kwa wale walikuwa wamepea kazi banake sasa ungeshidwa kichwa inapigwa mshumali ifanye nini nafikiri walikuwa natafuta hando manake mtu akisha katwa kichwa nafikiri ni wapi unaesashika hata siku dhubutu kwenda kuona mwili haiko imebebwa lakini siku dhubutu kwenda kuona singeweza wenye waliona walisema amepigwa risasi na hata amepigwa msumari kichwani nikashangaa hii, hii ni ukatili gani <laughs> unakuwa mtu na kumpiga msumari kwa kichwa inamaanisha nini ni kitu kiliudhi watu wengi sana after several weeks 12 people were arrested the incumbent mayor is deputy for the councillors and six other suspects in total police had 12 suspects in custody the prosecution claimed that the 12 were in a hotel in kasarani where the murder plot was planned and later executed the prosecution advanced the motive of a civic leader who was out to fight corruption but who was stopped in his tracks by a bullet samuel kaya a first time counselor at the time was among those arrested they came to my home at kahawa wendani they told me that they would want to ask me a few questions and i accompanied them to roiro i had nothing to fear of i told them i would drive my car they told me fine i drove my car all the way from kahawa wendani to roiro police station when i got there i found several cars parked in the in the in the, in the parking yard of the police station Looking at those cars I could see my colleagues inside the vehicles I wondered what is happening I was told to park my car there and I was put in one of the cars I asked I asked I asked them what is happening they told me don't ask any question We stayed in the car and uh, after after about two hours the vehicles were driven off we didn't know where we are being taken me i was taken to makuyu police station most almost uh, 110 kilometers from nairobi i stayed there for two weeks for one week then i was uh, brought to gati police station in thika where i found my colleagues there being tortured seriously some of them could not walk some of them were on crutches some of them some of them were swollen i wondered what is happening they asked they started interrogating me or asking me questions about the death of wajuguna uh, on the 14th day of july 1999 ruiru municipal council mayor stanley njoroge samuel kibacha kia and nine others were formally charged in court for the murder of charles mwangi wanjuguna when he was murdered I felt that I have lost a friend. And uh, I conducted a prayer which we could get it even from from the minutes when we went for the full council meeting. I was the one who conducted the prayers. 
and I asked God for those who, who did the killing or who or the ones who murdered him to be brought to book because I felt that I have to somebody. We did all we could as a council to raise money and we visited the home and we gave a check of 100,000. Me being the chairman of finance at the time, I was I'm the one who presented the check to the family for the arrangement of the burial. The prosecution had seen a much bigger contribution the six councillors had taken part in. The prosecution claimed it was the councillors who conspired to have Wanjiguna dead. In fact, they singled out the mayor as the man who might have had knowledge of the plan to have the council and civic leader dead. The prosecution called 56 witnesses in a trial that would last a straight six years. The prosecution largely relied on the evidence of Wanjiguna's daughter, Florence Njeri, and the son, Young Juguna. A teary and terrified Njeri told the trial judge, Justice Alex Etiang, that she saw and heard her father's killers struggle with him. Njeri told the court she pleaded with the father to give up all the money he had after the gang took from him 40,000 shillings. Njeri told the court, the gang then dragged the father out of the kitchen to where his vehicle was parked and still continued demanding for more money. In her statement, Jerry told the police she saw a tall man holding a stone. The man had a broad face, big ears, and a sharp nose. Mimi kusikia kwa gundi sikia kisema kuna watu wabaya na hofia maisha yake yako hatarini. Siku jua ni yakine nani. Na ikawa akaendelea akiwa na sema sema na mnaio. Hata kuna wakati ya rieda mkutano githurai. Na akiwa kwa mkutano akaguzia hilo jabu na jamaa moja akasimama akamuuliza bebe kwani utauliwa miaka ngapi kila siku na semanga unauliwa na hukufi utauliwa siku ngapi lakini huyo mtu wajiona hakuongea naye na hakumjibu ha alikuwa amemaliza kuongea sasa ikawa maneno ukawa na, na ugomvi hapo sasa mfurugano ikaingia mkutano ukaisha the son will tell the judge he had stepped out of the father's vehicle when he saw about eight people coming from the main gate straight into their house. The son says he saw Stephen Washira Wanderi, one of the accused persons, stand behind the tall man who was butchering the father. By the time Justice Alex Etiang was volunteering to leave the judiciary or face the humiliating Ringera Commission, the two old suspects, among them Samuel Kea, had been placed on their defense, the judge had ruled that the 12 had a case to answer. No one witness who came before the court and said he saw me doing the, the or, or having any, in, 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 anything to do with the matter. After five years on trial and with the judge leaving office before he could conclude the case, the court declared the entire trial a mistrial. The 12 was set free. We were two groups in this case. There was the group of the councillors, and there were the groups of the alleged uh, guys that we, we paid them. We didn't know them. They also didn't know us. So when we met in court, we were two groups that this group had come, and this, other, this group is there, and they have been enjoyed it with us, and nobody knew one another. We, even, even, even when we were in court, our lawyers had, had a very hard time for them to connect the case because the case was, it was like two cases for those who did the, 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 the killing and those who financed. But for, for the financiers and the executors to match, there was no evidence to jump. As the trial progressed, two suspects died under mysterious circumstances. One was called Julius Morandi. Morandi was tortured. Uh, when we were arrested, because I know he was a he, he was a he was a healthy guy, and in fact, most of the times when we were going to court, because I was also um, healthy enough, I was the one who was carrying him and assisting him to get in the van. We were not in the same block because when he went into prison, his health deteriorated, and he was taken to the to the hospital, which is at committee. In fact, during all our trial, he was. He was admitted there. And uh, as, as time went on, because it was a problem of nerves, 
we all we only heard that uh, he passed on uh, as uh, as the trial was going on way before the trial commenced another suspect dismas maina also died and unexplained circumstances while in the custody of the police police claimed he had committed suicide in his cell but independent investigations ruled out suicide someone had killed julius maina while under the care of the police Maina had allegedly confessed the police about the plot of the councillor murdered three months before he met his death. Uh, we were told that he hanged himself. An inquiry was, uh, was, was put, it is in the public domain, that he did hang himself. He, he was also tortured. He was also tortured. He was also tortured. The 12 appeared before Justice Alex at Young but a purge in the judiciary saw him leave office before the proceedings will come to an end. The court proceedings were declared a mistrial. Justice Kalpana Rawal took over the case. Case files takes a short break. siku moja nikiwa nyumbani kwangu eh nikasikia mlio wa risasi na hata kabla sijaingia kwa nyumba pale kwa gate nikakuta watu wengi nikaamini kweli kumbe hatuendi roiro then i was uh, brought to gate police station in thika where i found my colleagues there being tortured seriously kwani utauliwa miaka ngapi kila siku na semanga unauliwa na hukufi utauliwa siku ngapi and in fact most of the times when you were going to court because i was also um, healthy enough i was the one who was carrying him and assisting him to get in the van Three months after the high court dismissed the case against the 12 the attorney general at the time emos wako reopened the case the murder file was placed before justice kalpana rawal the witnesses were called again and it was during the second trial of the 12 where the defense dealt a major blow to the prosecution's case. All what they were saying, they were saying that the money was being misappropriated in the council. In fact, there came a time when the judge asked, are you talking, are we talking, or are we doing a case of misappropriation of funds of money, or are we doing a case of murder? A close friend of Wanjugunas told the court that the councillor had told him there were plans to have him killed. The witness told the court that Charles Wanjuguna told him that the mayor Stanley Nyoroge Mnene was the man who was planning to have him eliminated. Two witnesses had placed at least two suspects at the scene of the killing, a tall man with a broad face with big ears and a short man who had a run-in with Wanjuguna one year earlier. Wanjuguna's daughter Florence Njeri and the son told the court that Stephen Washira Wanderi had attacked the father in a past incident and he was among those at the scene of the killing on that fateful night. The tall man with a broad face and big ears, the court was told, was Dismas Minor, who died in police custody. After one year on trial, Justice Kalipana Rawal poured cold water on the prosecution's case. The judge ruled that the fact that witnesses had dropped the names of the councillors as the facilitators of Wanjuguna's killing, there was no evidence linking them to the actual murder. Justice Kalpana Rawal also questioned why Wanjuguna's daughter failed to describe to the police two other killers who forced her to show them how to start the father's vehicle immediately after killing him. The daughter had picked out two suspects from a police parade, Dismas Minor and Stephen Washira Wanderi. The judge said, despite Njeri identifying two suspects as being present during her father's killing, the fact that she failed to mention at least one of their names and failed to describe their features to the court, the prosecution had failed. Siku moja nikaenda town, tukakutana na nikamuona akiwa bere yangu. Eh... Nikaharakisha ndiye ni muzimamisha nikaona sitamuiza sitamuita kama mbuzi lakini wakati nilipomuuza mambe gani akaniambia umenikosea sana 
umenisitua sana. Nikamuuliza kwa nini? Kwani kaniambia hapana, sitaki mtu ananitoka nyuma. Na maana siku hizi maisha yangu siyasikii akiwa sawa naona niko hapo hatarini. On the 8th day of September 2004, 12 suspects among them the then rural mayor Stanley Njoroge Mnene were set free. Justice Kalpana Rawal ruled they had no case to answer. The judge singled out poor police investigations. Justice Kalpana Rawal said police had failed to carry out intelligent and professional investigations. At the committee maximum prison, relatives broke into song and dance to welcome the group back to the outside world. She is a fair judge. The wheel of justice in Kenya doesn't move. Our criminal justice system has simply collapsed. If it is not collapsed, it is in a permanent comatose. Fifteen years later, Samuel Kaya says it was a harrowing experience. Being charged, taken to committee, maximum prison. I've never been to any police station. I've never been to, I've never been questioned anything about uh, even the local, even the, the, the small issues from the chief and whatever. And having come from the, a disciplined force, I didn't expect myself to be uh, associated with any criminality. Out of the 12 suspects, at least three were placed at the scene of the murder, but the court was not convinced they had anything to do with the killing of the ambitious civic leader and politician. The killing of Charles Wanjuguna changed the politics of the vibrant Ruri Municipal Council. Samuel and his colleagues did not contest in any of the elective positions. Could, I would remember several times when we were with him. He was, he was talking that there were some people who wanted to kill him, but he could not leave it. Maybe he had his own differences, businesses, differences, or other kind of things that he knew for himself. Because I, I remember one time he could say that there are people who would wanted to kill him, but he never refused who were, who were to kill him. For now, the family of the slain councillors say they have moved on, but strongly suspect. The prosecution missed a chance to put to rest the killing of their father and husband and put away those who killed him. Because this thing, it affected the family. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't help the family, neither did it help us. Because we suffered in the prison. The family up to now, hawajajua nani aliwa baba yao. It has been 15 years now since Charles Minor Wanjuguna was killed. But friends and family are not any closer to finding the truth than they were in the fateful month of June 1999. Tungetaka kujua zaidi. Kama ingeweze kana serikali faja iwe zavyo, ituwabia ni fulani tungefuraia. Na akutane na sheria vile inavyo stahili. That was a question that has never been answered even to us because when we were telling the police to do the inquiry, we were telling the police to do the inquiry because in, in, in an inquiry you could gather a broader evidence because we didn't know why Wajoguna could have been killed, especially in the, uh, uh, politically as they had uh, framed the, 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 the story because politically Wajoguna was not a threat to us. The family of the slain civic leader declined to speak to Case Files. The daughter, who witnessed the entire ordeal, told Case Files she has never recovered. The killers of Charles Wanjuguna are still at large 15 years later. Case Files, the Ruru 12, is a case closed. Denison Sarigo, for Case Files.